Welcome to The Traveling Professors. I'm Professor Bob. And I'm Professor Sherry. And together, we are The, the Traveling, Traveling Professors. Professors. Welcome to show number 106. Today, Sherry and I are going to take you on a walking tour of Santa Croce in Florence, the church and the cloister. This is our last stop on our first day in Florence, so we've pretty much filled everything up. We've seen all kinds of art, and we're now going to see one of the most famous churches, the Basilica of the Holy Cross is what it really is, the Basilica de Santa Croce, and we'll see the wonderful area where various famous Florentines are buried, or at least there's a monument for them there. Now on our trusty map, you see we're going to be going a little bit more distance today. So we're coming from the Uffizi Gallery, so we're going to walk down to the Piazza de Santa Croce and it was raining that day and a little cloudy and we'll visit the church here and the outlying areas which is the cloister and then we will head back to our headquarters at the convent. Now this is actually 800 meters southeast of the Duomo and it was built outside the city walls. This area used to be a marshland when this was constructed. And it was originally constructed starting in May the 12th, 1294. And it was paid for by, of course, the city's wealthiest families. It was consecrated in 1442 by Pope Eugene IV. And the building design reflects an austere approach of the Franciscans. Well, if you look at this picture, this hardly seems like it's very austere. And that's because this is a Gothic revival front that has been put on this long time since the uh, original construction. Here is a picture of the church before it was reconstructed. So you see, this is what the church actually looked like in the 1860s. You can still find churches like this in Florence, where the Medici are buried. Here is that church. We'll be visiting it on another day, but you notice it has the same look church as Santa Croce. And you're going, what in the world is that wall? Well, here's a close-up view going into the visit the, the tombs of the Medici, and you can see the various brickwork and the wooden doors. So let's go back to Santa Croce. Here's the beautiful building. We went back later on on a day that was sunny to get a good picture of it. The bell tower that you see off to the right, that was added in 1842. It replaced an earlier one that was damaged by lightning. And this neo-Gothic marble facade dates from 1857 to 1863. The Jewish architect Nicola Matthes from Ancona designed the church's facade, working a prominent Star of David into its composition. Mathis wanted to be buried with his peers, but because he was Jewish, he was buried under the threshold and honored with an inscription. Now the church itself is actually built on a floor plan that is the Egyptian Tau Cross, which is the symbol of St. Francis. So it's 115 meters in length with a nave and two aisles separated by lines of octagonal columns. To the south of the church was a convent of whom there are some buildings that do remain. But you'll notice when you go in, here's as we walk into the church, you see how dark it is. Well, it wouldn't be quite as dark if it weren't raining outside, but it is not like the, the Gothic construction, very triumphant. This is pretty austere. You need to concentrate on the service. It's right down in front. And then here's a view up looking at the ceiling. So you have a main aisle. So it's almost Romanesque style with a little bit of, a little more lighting. This is the area where the altar is located, central area. There's a little closer view of the altar, some of the stained glass windows that were added, and this gigantic crucifix. Here's a little closer view of the crucifix. And then here's a little closer view of the altar. Now, if you turn around from the altar and look back, this is the, the back view. And on either side where these columns are, this, this is the area where we have memorialized famous people born in Florence. And we'll look at some of those a little bit later on. Now, up in front of the church, there are indeed some chapels. But here's a little better view of the ceiling from the front of the church. Now, the Church of Santa Croce has undergone all sorts of restoration and changes throughout the hundreds of years it's been in existence. It was badly flooded in the 1966 Arno Flood. Pollution, oil, all sorts of things. So this had to be cleaned and a lot of renovation had to be done. And then, now we were there in 2015. Two years later, in 2017, they closed the property to visitors because a batch of falling masonry killed a Spanish tourist. So let's go to the altars. Here's one of the side altars. This is my favorite side altar. You see it's very small. And then you see the gold object, the reliquy 
far in the back. Here's a close-up of it. This is one of the neatest things that I've ever seen in a reliquy. It is a robe with a cincture that was worn by St. Francis of Assisi. So this is a real object if you're a St. Francis fan. Then one of the other chapels that you see here, we have two sarcophagi in it. One of them that you see here is Desiree Clary. This was the wife of Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon's older brother. And then across from her, this other sepulcher is her daughter. Then we go to the back of the church so I give you a little better view of how the these monuments that sit along the walls now, I noticed when, if you look at the whole church, there's very little seating in it to begin with. And of course, a lot of churches didn't have seating. If they had pews, the people bought them and put them in for their family. There was a little change done during the Reformation era. Let's look at the, the monuments that we're coming to. Here we have the burial monument to Galileo. And then here's a, a closer view of Galileo's tomb. And if you go to the, the church, they have... Um, a kind of a cheat sheet that you can keep an eye on what, who's in what what monument but they also have this this one is the explanation of who did what on michelangelo's tomb so you can see which artist because everybody in the art community wanted to have their hand in this so here's a view of the the whole monument with the carvings the tomb and of course the frescoes at the top to give it depth here's a little closer view of the tomb. He really didn't want any fancy operation, but Florence was not going to be denied an opportunity to do something really great for Michelangelo. And then here's a view at the very top where you see the Pieta, the Christ down from the cross fresco, and then the other painting work. Now, if you've read The Prince, here's Machiavelli's tomb. I know Machiavelli has a bad reputation, but he is a great statesman for Florence, and he is worthy. Then we have the tomb of Dante Alighieri. Well, there's a monument to Dante Alighieri, but this is a cenotaph. A cenotaph is a memorial with no body or any parts. If you want to see where Dante was originally buried, you have to go to Ravenna. Now, he ends up in Ravenna because of a political squabble in Florence. The Italian states in the north were always caught between do we support the Pope or do we support the Holy Roman Emperor? known as the Battle of the Guelphs and the Ghibellines. In Florence, the Guelph party was split in two, a white Guelph and a black Guelph. And I believe Dante was a black Guelph, and they lost out, and he gets exiled. So he went to Ravenna and other places. As he got more and more famous, the Florentines asked that they said he would be, they'd pardon him. He could just, we'll pardon you, you can come on back. And he said, no, I didn't do anything wrong. You have to admit you were wrong before I'll come back. Well, he wouldn't do that. So when he died in Ravenna, here is where he was buried. He's buried underneath this pile of dirt, which has now got this nice ivy over it. Years later, it was decided that it wasn't appropriate, so they built a little mausoleum for him, which you can go into. So if you go into this monument to him, there's where Dante's really buried. And the place is lit by these oil lamps, and the oil is provided by the city of Florence to make up for their mistake. Then we come to Leonardo da Vinci. Well, we have another situation because Leonardo is not buried in Florence. It's a nice monument to him, a little plaque. If you want to see Leonardo, you got to go to Amboise, and that's in France. So here's an aerial view of Amboise, and he died in Clauluse, which is one of the buildings in the back here. And he was originally buried on the palace grounds, and this is where his original tomb was. And he remained there for a while, and then the various buildings were moved and demolished, and so they moved him again, and he ends up being in the little chapel of St. Hébert, which is not far away from where he was originally buried. So if you want to see him, you just go into the little chapel, go down the front. I believe he's on the left-hand side. You turn. They've got a plaque in the floor where whatever is left of Leonardo is located. And then a couple of other plaques. We've got Marconi's, the inventor of the radio, his plaque. We've got Enrico Fermi, part of the nuclear bomb group. And then this one is Rosini. So we turn around to head out of the church. Here we are looking into the back, heading towards the door. Ultimately, we walk out, go next door to the cloister. This is the walls of the cloister. And then we go inside. Now, there are places in here where they have leather working stations and leather experts. Well, this is the courtyard for the cloister. 
And uh, here's a picture of Sherry with her umbrella standing by the massive well that provided the water for this place. But since it was originally in a marsh, finding water is probably not much of a problem. Now, if you go into the building and you go to where the monks ate to the refactory, this is worth the trip all by itself. Look at this magnificent work of art. At the bottom is the Last Supper, and up above is the crucifixion and the various people associated with the life of Christ. It's gigantic. And then here's a little closer view of the crucifixion, and then here's a closer view of the Last Supper. And then we exit it out of there. There's a shot back at the little damp glory of Santa Croce. We go back to the convent, rest a little bit, and then go to our little restaurant not very far away and have dinner and conversation. And that is the end of our first full day in Florence. And we did not suffer from too much art overload. Sherry and I hope you enjoyed the tour. Please come by our YouTube channel at Bob Packett and please subscribe and leave some comments. Thank you very much. I've been doing podcasting on history for over 15 years. I've got over 4,000 shows, and I've done CDs, which, of course, can be sent out as USBs. So if you would really like to get more on history for free, then come by my website, as you see here, historyaccordingtobob.com, and see what's there. So thank you very much again.